In the last chapter of this playlist, we completed the Snow SQL client installation on Windows machine and tested the connectivity. In this chapter, chapter 3, we will explore how to establish connections using configuration file. So, we will cover how the default connection configuration looks like, the limitation of this approach, specifically on Windows machine, how to create one or more named connection via configuration file and how to use this named connection through the command line. It is a short and a quick video, so stay until the end of this video. If you are new to the channel, here is a quick tip to enhance your experience. Set video quality to 4K, choose your preferred audio language, and adjust playback speed for faster learning. All hands-on exercises used in this playlist are done using Snowflake Free Trial Edition. Got questions? Comment below or message me on Instagram. So, let's start our exercise. In the last chapter, we checked the log file inside our .snowsql folder. This folder resides within your user profile location. In this case, it is users slash hp slash .snowsql. Here, you notice there is a file named config without any extension. And this is the file where all the configuration parameters are stored and your SnowSQL client behavior can be controlled via this config file. So let me open this file in VS Code Editor. If you look into the first line, which has a text connection within bracket, this connection section represents the default Snowflake connection parameter. From line number 12 to line number 21, where we can specify the connection detail. So let me quickly uncomment them. Now I will copy paste the account ID. And if you do not know where to get this account ID from, you can always go to your Snow site web UI. Within the profile section, you have one option called account details. Click on that and you would be able to find the account ID, copy paste rather than typing it. So I copied the account ID. I will keep the region as commented. This is not required with this new type of account ID. I will quickly specify the username, password, database name, schema name, warehouse name, and role name. They are not must, they are optional. However, if you want to directly connect to a specific database, schema, warehouse, and role, these default parameters are very, very helpful. I will keep the proxy host and proxy port entries commented. If you see, the password is stored in plain text, and that is one of the limitations we have with Windows operating system. If you are a part of a large enterprise and having SSO-based authentication or your organization prefer to use RSA key-based authentication, you can certainly skip this password entry and you can access it without the password. However, you need to use a different approach for that, which we will cover in our future chapter. Now, I have saved this detail and let's go to our command prompt and run Snow SQL client. So, I have not provided any parameter like minus A for account ID and minus U for user via command line. Our Snow SQL client has picked the default connection detail from the configuration file and able to connect to the Snowflake. So let me quickly run a context function and see if it is able to produce the result or not. So it's working fine. So far, we understood how to use this config file to connect with Snowflake, specifically if you have only one instance and you want to use a default connection. It is also possible that you can keep your config file in a different location. For that, you can say SnowSQL minus minus config and that way you can move your config file into a different location. In Windows machine, we have this plain text based password and probably if you want to keep your config file in a different location, you can follow this approach. Now, let's move to the next section and we will explore how to create named connection. What does it mean and why do we need that? So for example, if you have more than one Snowflake instance, we should be able to easily switch from one instance of a Snowflake to another instance of a Snowflake. This is a very typical scenario in many large Snowflake based projects where your organization has decided to have multiple instances which represent dev, QA and prod. So let's go back to our VS code and see how we can create named instances. I am not going to create multiple Snowflake trial edition and I will just simulate this scenario using multiple schema within our database. 
Let me copy this section and create three named instances. So if you look into the line number 23, it says connections.example within the bracket. So connections is a context here and examples is the name of the connection. So I will create connections.dev, connections.qa and connections.prod. So let me quickly create three different schema using our SnowSite web UI. So I created this schema. Now I also changed my named connection. Now I'm back to my command line and here I'm going to connect to our dev instance. So when you have to connect to a named schema, after SnowSQL command, you have to use minus C, which stands for connection, or you can also give minus minus connection followed by the name of the connection. In this case, it is dev. Now, my connection is successfully established with this named connection. And if you pay attention to the prompt, it has dev underscore sch as my default schema. Let me quickly run a context function. So, it's working well. Now, let me connect to a QA instance. And in this case, I will give SnowSQL minus C QA, where QA represent the named connection. So this is also working and my schema is QA underscore SCH. And finally, let me run a prod connection. And here I will specify is no SQL minus C space prod. And now it is connected to the prod. It is connected to same Snowflake instance. But if you look into the prompt, the schema is prod underscore SCH. So if you have more than one instance, or you have different role, same Snowflake instance, like read write in your in your dev database or schema and read only in QA and prod database or schema, you can always use this named connection approach and increase your productivity. Again, and one of the limitation when we are using Windows operating system that this password is very much visible because it is stored in a plain text. As promised, this was a quick and a very short video. In the next chapter, we are going to do the installation process on a Linux operating system. We will also see how to configure it, test the connection, check the log file and other configuration issues. And we will also see how we can create named connection within our Linux operating system, followed by the Mac operating system. The configuration approach is almost same in all the platform. However, the location of the config file varies from platform to platform and that is what very important thing to understand. It is very much possible that you may have to establish a connection from a terminal and most of the time the terminal will be having a Linux based operating system. If you would like to learn how to establish a connection without a password then probably you should jump to chapter 6 and chapter 7 where you would understand how to establish a connection using single sign-on or based on RSA key or if your organization has a policy to enable the MFA or multi-factor authentication. In that case, you can certainly watch chapter 6 to chapter 7. So, I will catch you in the next lecture. Hope you got something valuable from this video. If you did, please hit the like button. And this will help others to discover the relevant Snowflake video tutorial. And if you think this can help someone in your team, feel free to share. Thanks for watching and happy learning.